So we were going to talk for a few minutes about uh, um, kind of what we do at BetaWorks, but but from a data perspective for uh, bots that people are building. So for those of you who don't know us, we do two things at BetaWorks. We build companies, and independently but highly related, we make seed stage investments. And so um, one of those things in the category of investing is we're doing this thing, BotCamp, which, which we mentioned. Um, so what I wanted to do was share some data from how, what we're seeing in terms of, there was a question earlier about what's being built, categories specifically, um, without sort of going deep into specific companies, talking about which, uh, talking about some data from the bot perspective, and then also we built a bot, uh, and so I wanted to share some data with how people were, were interacting with it. Yeah, uh, so we'll keep it uh, short, but uh, Matt and I uh, are the co-creators of something called BotCamp, which is a program um, that we're doing at Betaworks. It's a program we're going to take in 10 uh, chatbot startups, do sort of like a pre-seed accelerator program with them. And uh, the, ins the sort of inspiration for this is that uh, since I joined Betaworks, sorry, uh, about a year ago, uh, Matt and I have had a conversation about bots, I think, like a two-hour conversation about bots like every day since I started. Uh, and then um, about three months ago, uh, we just came up with the idea for BotCam, thinking about how excited we were about the space. We had already obviously made an investment in Howdy uh, with Ben almost a year ago actually now, and uh, wanted to learn a lot more about the space and frankly um, make a bet on chatbots being a big thing and, and, and trying to figure out what the opportunities there were. So uh, we opened it up, uh, we got 346 six startups applied, um, all bots, and uh, we're going to pick 10 of those for the program. Uh, and the program will be 12 weeks of product development, branding, user acquisition, uh, data science, fundraising, all sort of typical stuff you see in Accelerator, but all uh, focused around uh, bots and, and conversational interfaces. And we have an awesome set of partners, um, which you can see on this obligatory um, logo uh, slide. Uh, and now we can jump in sort of to the data, which I think is the most interesting part for everyone here. And um, Matt, do you want to dig in on this? So this is kind of hard to see from up there, but I think we're going to share this more publicly. So the, the most 15% uh, of the applications were enterprise. And I don't think it's a surprise. Slack is a big platform for distribution. And so and I think that's the use case on enterprise. Um, we have creation tools and platforms as the second biggest category, 9%. Um, the third biggest category is assistant slash concierge, 8%. Healthcare and wellness, 7%. Commerce, 6%. Finance, 6%. News and media. And then we have kind of entertainment, travel, education. To me, the interesting thing here is that um, if you take out assistants, which slash concierge is 8%, and if you look at travel, which is 5%, and maybe one other category, those are the only human-assisted categories. Everything else is what we think about as like actual bots, things that aren't just sending you to, some, sending you to someone and then uh, routing it to a human and then routing back and responding. Some things are probably hybrids, but I think it was interesting that there was real kind of technology there. Yeah, and then um, we uh, managed to tally together the different platforms that everyone was building for. Um, you'll notice that these add up to more than 100% because uh, a lot of the bots built for multiple platforms, which is not surprising. Uh, but um, what might have been uh, noteworthy is that SMS still the most popular platform for people to build for. Obviously, uh, I think 100% of those are using Twilio, as far as we could tell. Um, I think the, uh, the, the weighting of enterprise-focused bots uh, meant that a lot of um, the bots that we saw were building for Slack, and I think showed a lot of the maturity uh, of the ecosystem there. Um, okay, yeah, so I mean, we can, and again, we'll circ circulate these, and if you have questions specifically, we can, we can hit them. Should we, go, I mean, the, uh, I'm sorry? Yeah, so this sort of, depending on how you think about it, it, so this is like they actually built an app, but they had then the notion of bots inside of it. Um, and, then, and then you have sort of at the far end, we had a, f a few on Alexa, fewer than actually I thought, I thought would apply. Um, we had a bu uh, some that were online, and then, uh, and then Kick and, and Twitter. So should we go to the next one? Yeah. So the next thing we want to talk about was we would built this um, kind of, fun bot called Botwick. The CEO of Betaworks is John Borthwick, so he's British, so everything's a pun. Uh, and so Botwick is a pun. So you can text this number to see it, and I have included the number on the subsequent slides so that I can kind of keep going. Um, but some data that we got from this is that people said hello 19 different ways, 
Um, hello, hello Botwick, hello Mr. Bot, hello world, hello, hello, oh hello, what is hello? So all these different kinds. Lily said hi Botwick Lily. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yo Botwick, why you no home is my favorite. Um, so, so the intro message we found was actually pretty important when you think about not being able to communicate what the drop down menus are, like what the thing can do, the intro message becomes really important. So just so that you can see it, it says, how are you today? What would you like to discuss? You can ask me the weather, just say weather plus zip or the news, or ask me what podcast the boss is listening to, I get to hear them too, uh, or about a joke, how about a joke? I highlighted in bold the things that were sort of keywords for categories. And so what we have on the back end, we use uh, Dexter to do regex expressions. And just so you have a sense, this is a relatively dumb bot. It is literally an Excel spreadsheet where on column A, it's a regex match, and column B is the response to that question. Uh, just to give you kind of a sense of the simplicity of this. Um, so 200 pe so we had 1,900 messages to give you a sense of the denominator, uh, 206 weather, news, podcasts. And then we have people asking questions that aren't necessarily directly here. So how old are you? How, how dot star are you? Um, read it, what are you reading? Was reading time? What time is it? And then ask, people ask for a joke. A lot of the most popular ones were weather and joke, which were the anticipated ones. Um, the, one of the things that came up yesterday, so I, I kind of ran a bunch of data last night because I thought it was interesting to, to hear, these are guys a little bit cut off, but I'll read them out. Um, people were talking about the length of search queries, and so I went back into the Botwick logs and just looked at what the, um, what the lengths w were and how people were interacting with this thing, which people kind of fundamentally know is actually about keywords. Even though they're asking these questions, we're basically doing these regex matches to figure out which keywords. So, on average, the length of a request was 13 characters. The um, shortest was two, the longest was 50. Now, keep in mind this is mostly done during, or it was all done through text message, so that probably influences the way that people are asking the questions or the length of the questions. But what was interesting was, just t looking at one example of the weather category, people would ask, what's the weather in a particular zip code? Tell me the weather in a zip code. Weather, zip code, weather. And so people were kind of, you can see this in a bunch of different categories. People were trying to figure out what, uh, what kind of, what um, the keyword was and just going directly to it. We could also, this sort of looks at another piece of it, 514 questions didn't have answers. You can start to see people trying to poke around to see whether there's keywords or Easter eggs in this. So we have various emoji, lots of profanity. People ask questions like Alan Turing, are you happy, are you my friend? And then people would say like Bernie Sanders, drums, E equals MC squared, happy birthday. Um, I think somewhere in there is like Trump. Um, and I think that was, that was, I wanted to just go through that really quickly, but if you guys, all, any of you have specific questions around any of this data, we're happy to uh, answer them. Thanks. Thanks. So, so we haven't actually finished that process, so we're right in the very end of the process. So we're getting to, uh, I'll, I'll, in, I'll tell you sort of a broad f view that we have taken from uh, on the investment perspective, and tell me if you have something to add here, Peter, is that we were looking for bots where there was some level of depth somewhere. So meaning that like, I'll, I, I was using kind of in, internally, uh, Uber as an example, like that's a bot, but the, it has like the most depth. There are cars driving around and su like supporting that bot, right? And so, whether that's sort of deep data science or a bunch of a bunch of data that that they're gathering, or AI, or um, some kind of network that's being built, that was sort of the a, a bit a, a bunch of how we were thinking about um, competitive modes. Yeah. I mean, I think the other thing is um, since it's a pre-seed program, it's also meant for people very very early and and um, Almost, most stuff was pre-product um, or pre-launch, um, not pre-product, but uh, not everything was. And we were, you know, there was a, a pretty wide breadth of where people were in the product process um, that applied. And um, we didn't want it just to be stuff that was, we could have just picked stuff that was out in market and had users. Uh, and we d deliberately didn't want to do that in the stuff we selected. <laughs> Another question? Yeah, so out of all those, like, Wow, that's amazing. We just haven't thought of it. Oh, there's a, 
I mean, there's a lot going on. Well, we saw a lot of the same ideas over and over again, um, not surprisingly. I, I think that um, some of the things that surprised us were around, uh, I, I would say that, that Betaworks historically has been maybe more consumer focused in the way that we've approached everything, uh, but that a lot of the, the, the most um, fully formed products were around enterprise, and, it, and I think part of that was that the use cases around bots and, and when they make sense are most fully realized in the enterprise space, specifically really around Slack and people being able to integrate there and be able to have a bot which is able to integrate into their workflow or into some aspect of um, the business. And so we were, I think, we're a little surprised by, I mean, maybe surprised ourselves of how much we came around to seeing the utility of bots in the enterprise space rather than, I think our original intention is that we were gonna have a lot more consumer Well, the, 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 uh, we had people from all over the world. That was something that was really encouraging. I mean, people from West Africa, people from uh, South Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, China, um, South America, uh, a lot from the U.S. And so there was, a, a, I think, what surprised us, maybe not surprised us, but I think what, what um, was interesting was seeing that there are people building bots all over the world and that it's not something that's localized to the Bay Area or just people who are, you know, sort of within the, 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 this network, um, that it's people all over the world see it as an opportunity to build and innovate and, and uh, make cool stuff. And so I, I think that because it was an open filter, we were able to get people that wouldn't necessarily uh, be part of the traditional fundraising process that, uh, for, you know, that, that startups go through. So that was pretty, pretty awesome. I think everyone wants lunch. I know I do. Uh, but one more question. Okay. Um, what does your bot with data tell you about the usefulness of guiding users with keywords? Like, I see that keywords are really important to people who are looking for a keyword and goal. Maybe they weren't always seeing all the time that you already had in the bot versus what I would do. And then everybody says, but I want Bernie Sanders and Trump and Trump. So what, is, what does that kind of data tell you about uh, exactly what it is? I mean, I think that the, the so first, so we did we didn't, we didn't bowl anything. Um, there's a, there's a uh, bot called purple, which maybe you're referring to, which, which has all caps, which I think is a, they'll make a sentence and then anything in all caps, you can respond with just that. I think it's actually a really good UI and a good user experience to just subtly say, if you want to respond to this, you can, and, here, and there's, there will be more behind there. Um, I've seen ones that say text M for more, so they'll send you one message and then kind of wait to pull. Um, I don't know that we have answers yet. I think it sort of raised more questions about how you indicate what these things are supposed to do. One of the things that we've learned from, I think, making the, the BotCamp bot from Botwick, um, from seeing data in, in, inside of products like Poncho, is that um, some, we need to be, all of us need to be thoughtful about how to, about whether, like where our lane is. Like are we staying in our lane or are we, like how do we react to things that are outside of this core kind of vertical scope? A lot of the conversations yesterday in the AI and machine learning um, group were about, about the opportunities in go, to go deep in verticals, but that sort of necessarily means you're not gonna be able to answer every question. And I think that's, I think that having a personality to be able to respond to things that are outside can be helpful for the for the Botwick bot. He he, John I think has like a random um, magic eight ball answer that comes through for the bot camp bot. We just said, this is a dumb bot, and so we want you to help him help us make it smarter. Any other questions? Thank you so much. <laughs>